So the last question, can you help with awareness of streets and parking lots for 17 year old, uh, a 17 year old that can only focus on one thing at a time? What do you say to that parent, David? Um, so this is, I, I really want to know a lot of background on this particular situation. Um, so I'm going to give, I'm going to give a little bit of a multifaceted response, I hope. Okay. Um, uh, one of the things that we're looking at here, is they're 17 years old, so they're a little bit older. So I'd be curious to see how much services they're receiving. Um, if they are receiving ABA, then this is something that we really should be working on. We should be targeting this and we should be getting as much practice in as possible. Uh, one of the issues with things like crossing the street, uh, parking lot safety, or any real safety type skill in general, is we don't really have that opportunity for a learning history. We know that if we step into the street, we're gonna get hit by a car. But depending on where our learner is, it, they don't have the language that we can conceptualize that for them. Um, then it's kind of just an arbitrary thing for them. You know, we're, we're walking up to the street and then we're doing this little ritual thing and then we cross the street. And then they're not really pairing that with the fact that the reason we're doing that is because we're making sure that a car isn't coming. Um, so what we want to do in that situation, we can't conceptualize that. We want to kind of move into teaching this as more of a rule-based thing. And this just becomes the routine. So that we can have a lot of success for teaching things like brushing teeth and taking a shower because we turn it into a routine and it's, this is what the routine is and this is how I do it. And then once we get that routine really, really established, um, whether or not we understand why we're doing the routine, we still have that routine uh, taught and we're, we're, we're using that. So we, we kind of need to do the same thing with crossing the street and parking lot safety um, where we just really, really teach that. Now the problem is, we also don't want to learn her to look one way, look the other way. There's cars coming, and I cross the street anyways, right? Um, we, we really want to teach that part of it. If the car is coming, then we stop. Um, and so the, really, the only way to do that is to really, really, really practice lots of different times. Um, I would start with the streets and the parking lot. Uh, I would start with the, the, the street that we have to cross the most often. I would start with that street. And I would start with the parking lot that we're going to be in the most often and really, really identify what skills I want to teach, um, looking both ways, stopping when cars are coming, um, continuing to look while crossing the street. Um, and I would try to practice that during an off hour if I could too, maybe practice it earlier in the morning or later in the evening when we don't have a lot of cars. And then once we get those skills that we're looking for well established, then moving into it when it's slightly busier. Um, and continuing for it that way. But once we do teach it in those two locations, in that one parking lot that we're always in, and that one street that we're always crossing, we're still going to have other streets and other parking lots. So we're going to want to move to a new parking lot, and we're going to want to move to a new street, and we're going to want to keep doing that over and over and over again. Um, we don't want to assume that this skill is just going to generalize. We want to really give them a lot of opportunities to practice this across many different environments and never really assume generalization because this is a really big safety concern. Yes, and I appreciate uh, everything that you just said because this is so important for parents. We forget that you know, even if you were teaching this to somebody who was neurotypical, you, it would take a while and there would be multiple opportunities and that you would continue to worry about them um, and, and make sure and prompt and, and do things for years and years and years. And when we, you know, it may be that we didn't get to this or um, until the person is 17, but it's still gonna take hundreds and hundreds of trials and you gotta be patient and give them all that opportunity in safe uh, ways that David was uh, talking about. Um, or it may be that this person, you know, sometimes a skill with a neurotypical child will take 100 trials, but with our kids it takes 2,000. But we, with it, when it's a safety issue, we just want to keep working on it because it's, it's a safety issue. I mean, it sort of speaks to itself. So, David, I appreciate all of your answers. Thank you so much for everything that you do for our families and for taking the time away to be with us this morning and answer these questions in such a thoughtful and considerate way. We really appreciate you.